vision for the BCCA is is um, really helping to create a future where um, Black and Indigenous student athletes, coaches, administrators, uh, and executives um, feel like they have a voice. Uh, and you know, I think a big part of it is uh, the education piece. I think there's a lot that is new, and and given kind of these tough, uh, you know, these tough times. Um, a lot has come to the forefront. And, you know, I think in Canada, where we, for so long, we kind of assume that there haven't been challenges here. Now that we're starting to hear from different people of color that, hey, you know what, this has been something that we've been struggling with for such a long time. Uh, now we're starting to see that advocacy uh, really, um, really take a foothold. And you see it in our mass media, right? Like we've seen it with our sport teams, boycotting games. Uh, we see it, uh, I mean, we see it in our corporate sector, we're seeing it in our community sector. And, uh, you know, I think as Canadians, we've always played a leading role, um, you know, in terms of different uh, affirmative action initiatives and social justice. And uh, we saw, uh, I mean, even with women in sport, like we've come a long way in the last decade um, and we still have a, a ways to go. And so um, I'm really excited about the BCCA because I do think that we can play a role in connecting individuals with one another um, to create some um, training programs and modules, uh, continue to raise awareness. Uh, and I think it's just about educating. And, you know, I, I always say, like, if you know better, you do better, right? And so um, I think what's important is there's a lot that, that you know, people don't know and that they're still kind of coming around to and learning and trying to understand. And, um, and I think everyone is going into this fall with that kind of mindset. You know, I have to, I have to think about things through a different kind of lens, through an equitable lens, uh, through a social justice lens. Uh, and I think we've shown that we can do that, you know, with things like gender equity, with things like transgender inclusion policies and so forth. Um, but, you know, that's what, that's what I think is exciting about, um, about what we can do with the BCCA is uh, we want to try to connect uh, the, the grassroots and the community level with our most formalized levels of, of sport. And, you know, we want to meet somewhere in the middle and, and be able to promote um, more Black and Indigenous people um, to, to be, really be that, uh, be visible and be as diverse uh, as, as, as the sports that we're engaging in. Well, with the BCCA, uh, very early on, we started to ask ourselves, you know, what does success look like? And so uh, one of the first things we wanted to do is with one of our objectives of celebration, we use our social media platforms and our website as a connecting tool. And uh, bi-weekly, you know, we publish stories on different trailblazers um, and different people of color who are coaches, who are involved in the sport community that are playing a leading position. And so to us, you know, that means success. If we can continue to share those stories and connect people, um, that's definitely uh, a success. Um, through our second initiative, which is advocacy through allyship, we're actually working on uh, a, a project called the Racial Equity Project, uh, and it's a it's a national uh, um, it's a national project that is aimed at capturing the experiences of Black and Indigenous student athletes, coaches, administrators, and executives. Uh, and so, uh, over the last three or four months, we've actually been communicating to our formal uh, collegiate sport organizations. Uh, we've reached out to every college institution across the country, uh, and it, it pretty much would be a qualitative and a quantitative study. Um, we have an academic research team that's leading this, uh, and so we're really excited about this project because, number one, it's going to validate some of the experiences and challenges uh, for people who are alumni and who can, you know, uh, really help kind of frame the discourse. Uh, but it also gives an opportunity to take a snapshot as to where we're at now. Like, what can we do to make our Canadian universities and Canadian colleges more inclusive uh, for uh, people in our athletic departments and, and, on our, and on our campuses? So we're really excited about that. Um, within the next month, we're actually um, we're working with the Ca Coaching Association of Canada and we're launching uh, the first ever Black Female Coach Mentorship Program. Uh, and we have uh, a phenomenal group of women from different walks of life uh, in, a, in a variety of different sports. And so we're really excited about launching that program. We think that's going to be a really good precedent uh, for some of the mentorship that we want to continue on. Uh, and then lastly, the networking and the opportunity to connect. Uh, that's our that's our last uh, uh, objective. And 
uh, you know, we've just been trying to stay present in social media and connecting different people. And, uh, and I think, you know, that in and of itself is really powerful. What is needed for continued traction? Well, I think, uh, you know, over the last seven or eight months, there's been many calls to action. Um, and there have been, you know, so many, you know, corporate sponsors, you know, in our media industry, you know, our, our um, you know, through the federal government. And I think there's been a push to support uh, black owned businesses and black owned organizations. And we, we also have seen a lot of advocacy through sport, like through our professional leagues. Um, I honestly would like to see um, more resources directed to some of, some of our grassroots organizations. Uh, that are that are that are actively serve it, servicing marginalized communities, and so for me, I think that's what the next step is. And there's been um, many more, um, many more calls to action. I would say, like in our business world, and you know, like in in, in hiring practices. Um, and and I think that you know, there's so much we can do at the ground level. Uh, and so that's not to say there there aren't things happening now, but but that's the to me that's the next step. Is how can we make that connection between professional uh, athletes who are doing a lot of advocacy, and then there's a lot of calls to action within our corporate sector and our community sector and government sector. Uh, and so, you know, let's let's take that one step down, and now let's look at our communities in Nova Scotia, in Ontario, in BC, around the country that are servicing marginalized communities, and let's give those organizations some support. Like as much as I, you know, I I lament saying this, but it, it really depends on uh, the work on of our allies and uh, people who are in uh, positions of power. Because change can happen as soon as, you know, this upcoming academic year. Uh, change can happen, you know, next year. Change can happen by this winter. Um, and I think what's been positive uh, during the Black Lives Matter movement is that uh, we have seen change now. And there's, there's so many different ways to measure that. And we've seen advocacy. I think we've seen um, our white allies and those in positions of power you know, make statements, uh, be vulnerable, um, relinquish some of their power and some of their positions to help further this cause. And so I do think things are happening now. Um, but, you know, is there, is there, you know, a five-year plan and, and a two-year plan? And yeah, absolutely. But, but I think it's all incumbent on, you know, are those people in leadership positions going to continue to open the door for these conversations? And, you know, I think everyone can agree that we don't want these conversations to end. You know, I think we need to we need to look at this as seriously as we do uh, 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 you know, gender inclusion, as seriously as we do you know sexual identity initiatives and, and so forth. Uh, you know, as seriously as we do our indigenous brothers and sisters. Uh, and you know, to me, that's that's when Black Lives Will Matter, when it's just as important as as you know as things on that level. I want to give a shout out to everybody in our Canadian sport community. I have been motivated and inspired by so many people, uh, some uh, men and women that I grew up with that are professional uh, athletes that have been using their platforms to speak, uh, some of our foremost correspondents, um, some of our most wealthiest business leaders. I am just... Um, I don't think anybody could have envisioned, uh, you know, the last seven or eight months. And 2020 has been a challenging year. And I think everybody needs to hear that, you know, we're going on the right path. You know, we're doing the right things. Uh, and I think we need to continue to lean on each other uh, in this time of uncertainty, you know, going into a post-pandemic world. And there's, I think the fight still needs to happen. Like we still need to be willing to carry it on into the fall. Um, into the new year uh, and you know I'm, I'm proud to be uh, Canadian I think as Canadians we're making a lot of progress uh, but I would I would like to see these conversations be furthered um, I want to shout out St. FX University um, you know my AD and administration and uh, our athletics department you know um, it's you know we're a big family and so uh, nothing that I'm doing now is possible without those that support me back home and, and here in my job